Hello there, this is Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space, and today I'm here with a review of Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. I read this for Victober, which is hosted by Lucy the Reader, Katie from Books and Things, and Kate Howe, and it's a wonderful way to get more into Victorian literature. I actually read Mary Barton along with my friend Rainy from Rainy Day Reads, and we read it with one of her subscribers. They both read it faster than I did, but we had a blast talking about our different insights, and I cannot wait to share this wonderful book with you. This is a political tale of class struggle that is far superior to The Jungle by Upton Sinclair. And it's because it's peopled by very complex characters who are oppressed by the darkness. But, a la Dostoevsky, the darkness in their lives is often lightened by precisely timed moments of Christian faith. Mary Barton is Elizabeth Gaskell's first novel, published in 1848. It was actually based on the story of an actual murder of a mill owner that happened in 1831. It features a lot of poverty-stricken characters who dream of a better life, who are often just starving, and it also features some upper-class characters, although they are not followed or depicted quite as closely as the working class. This is really a novel that's depicting the working class. But the wealthy mill owners and other characters that are not among the starving working class are given good characterization, just not focused on. We very closely follow the life and the family and the friends of a girl named Mary Barton. She's kind of the hub around which all the spokes of the wheel are arranged. Mary is a young working girl and we follow her as she sort of chases her dreams of marrying out of poverty and she has a couple different lovers that we follow. Lovers in the Victorian sense, not in the sense that they were all sleeping together. We start the story with Mary as a very young girl actually. She's being fed with dreams of being a lady by her aunt Hester. When Hester disappears, Mary believes it's because Hester has run into some luck and become a lady. Mary's own dreams of marrying into a higher class actually lead her into some trouble. Mary is not the only character in this book who dreams of a better life and whose dreams lead them into trouble. Her father is another character and he's actually a subplot character as defined by John Truby, which is a character who faces a similar problem and handles it in a completely different way. Her father has suffered a lot, seen people starve to death, and he is convinced that the poor and the rich are going to be in a war until the rich start giving the poor more of a living wage. And then of course we see the mill owners who just don't quite understand how dire the circumstances are for their workers. My opening impressions of the book were surprise and pleasure and also a little bit of concern because although I was initially very intrigued by the opening chapter which has a mystery set up right away and also a very moving death, I began to be concerned as the tragedies just kept happening that the story was going to be grimmer than I expected which did turn out to be true but that wasn't a concern for the entire book because I could see that there were lighter touches happening especially with Gaston faith. The face grew beautiful as the soul neared God. A peace beyond understanding came over it. Gaskell writes from a position of faith like Dostoevsky, so even when things are really grim, there's still faith to reckon with, and that often will lighten some of the burden. Gaskell also kind of intersperses these very grim character studies that often happen with explosive plot events, like a mill fire. You can see right away that Gaskell seems to have a purpose similar to the author up to Sinclair who wrote The Jungle which is a socialist protest novel against capitalism of the time in America. I think it was turn of the century like right around 1901 that he was writing about. But Gaskell really balances the political narrative with very complex characters like Mary and her father and her lovers and her friends and even her enemies. That alone makes it far better than The Jungle. So class distrusted class and their want of mutual confidence wrought sorrow to both. The details of the working class were another concern that I had right off the bat, but I can see why she included them. She was trying to show just how poor these people were in Manchester and why they were striking. Really, her moral argument turned out to be very complex and the setting was very well realized and the characters as well. So overall, all that worked in favor of this book. I've only read one other book by Elizabeth Gaskell and that was Mr. Harrison's Confessions and her characters were really one of the treats of that book. They were so complex and they felt so real. They had all kinds of foibles and I loved it. And although Gaskell does use some sweeping generalizations of the characters as a whole, such as like the different classes of workers having a certain quality. Overall, she's fantastic at characterization and it's definitely one of my favorite things about her style, which 
it's hard to pick a favorite thing about her style because she doesn't really have any weaknesses that I'm aware of and we'll continue talking about that but I just wanted to say real quick about Mary. Following Mary really made this novel a treat. She's a very strong character, very teen-like. She has some flaws. All of these characters have flaws and sometimes she's even a little bit sassy which is fun and she's contrasted against this web of other very complex characters who have different personalities and Gaskell uses the contrast to make moral statements and also just to compare the rest of the cast because there is a lot of variety there. She's also great at plotting, which we see later in the book especially, but she does use explosive plot events to kind of grip your attention early in the book. And then everything comes together near the end of the book. And the end is very exciting. But regardless, throughout the book, she continually surprised me with the plot events by going much further than I would expect in a situation. I would be like, oh yeah, this is gonna happen because it's a Victorian novel. And then she would completely derail me by going a totally different way than I expected. She did use some of that deep, dark Victorian secret trope, which I'm not really a fan of and which stressed stresses me out like with Romola by George Eliot and Hester by Mrs. Oliphant. But in general, that's not what Gaskell uses to create tension, which is quite forward for her time, it seems like to me. Generally, she will just use the deep dark secret to set up the plot. And as soon as the secret becomes really relevant to the plot, more of a focus for the plot, then she will tell us what the secret is so that we're on the same plane as the characters and we're trying to solve problems along with them, particularly Mary. She gives Mary information throughout the story so that Mary can solve problems, which makes her a very proactive protagonist and not a dumb protagonist. She makes mistakes early on in the story, but she really gets a chance to solve her own problems. That to me is real problem solving. The deep dark secret trope generally feels like stagnation to me and it's just stressful. It's so like, just give the characters the right information, please. Hello, it's very late. By now, you know to expect a visit from editor Christy in the middle of your videos. I just wanted to insert here something I forgot to mention earlier when I was filming, which is that I've read two relatively minor works by Elizabeth Gaskell and two relatively minor works by George Eliot. Not relatively minor in the sense that they were small, but just that they're not part of like the main recommended canon. I've read a novella-ish length work from each and a longer work from each. So far from what I've seen, Elizabeth Gaskell is a way better plotter. She doesn't rely on the deep dark Victorian secret trope and her characters actually have agency. They solve their own problems and that is just way more fun for the reader in my opinion. So Elizabeth Gaskell is a better plotter fight me. As for symbolism, one of the things that I loved in Mr. Harrison's Confessions was charting out the symbolism of each scene because you could almost predict what was going to happen if you paid really close attention to the symbolism. And I didn't get a chance to pay attention to all the symbolism in this novel, which is pretty complex because it's just so long and I didn't have the same amount of time for it that I did for Mr. Harrison's Confessions. But there was some symbolism that I noticed, such as the mill fire I mentioned. It seems to kind of explode and ignite a certain plot line and it was very dramatic. Rich and poor, masters and men were then brothers in the deep suffering of the heart. Gaskell talks a lot in this story about two themes in particular that I detected and if you've read this story you can probably detect a lot more than just two so I'd love to hear down below if you've noticed anything about this story that I haven't talked about. But the two themes that I noticed are that human suffering is universal and that the people who do not suffer as much really need to pay attention to the suffering of others and share. Instead of being wrapped up in their own sufferings, it's really important for the more fortunate humans to share with the less fortunate humans. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with problems like what England was facing in this book. This novel also very heavily hits the theme of class divide and how we should not try to transcend our class divide. Mary would like to marry above her class and her father is extremely against it and several of the other characters also interact with this theme and it just happens to be a very heavy one that's hit throughout the novel that I didn't really appreciate that much I mean I guess it's part of the Victorian morality it's just not as applicable today overall this book was amazing even though it was much grimmer than I expected it was so skillfully written that me as a wannabe writer I cannot help but be really impressed by how Gaskell used so many story mechanics 
her characters, her plot, her settings, her moral argument. It was all brilliant and really well crafted. And I cannot wait to read more Elizabeth Gaskell because this is just her first novel. And while I didn't really enjoy it as much as Mr. Harrison's Confessions, I have full faith in Elizabeth Gaskell because this was so skillfully written. And I just wanted to let you know that there is a free version available on YouTube and I will link that down below for you in case you want to just listen to it. It's great for listening. If you feel like you've missed anything, your library will probably have an ebook copy. You can just download it and check out whatever part of the chapter that you were confused about. The video that I'm linking down below does have chapter marks in the description that will bring you to the correct chapter in the video, so it's very useful. I'm gonna give this novel probably a B plus because while I really did enjoy the story mechanics, I need to read more Elizabeth Gaskell because I feel like I know some people get annoyed with reviews viewers who compare works of an author against other works by an author. So I'm going to try not to do that. It's just that I know that I've read something else by this author that I loved even more. So it's hard for me to give it the same grade. So I'm going to give it a B plus, but in a different mood, I might have just as easily given it an A minus. And if I'd been able to read the whole thing super closely, which is my preference, I might have even have given it a higher grade because it was really enjoyable to kind of take it apart and analyze it chapter by chapter. I I just didn't have time to do that for about two thirds of the book. About one third of the book I analyzed in depth and I really enjoyed that. So my experience of the book does play a little bit into this, but I would highly recommend this to anybody who is a Victorian fan. I really did enjoy it. If you're not already a Victorian fan, I recommend starting with Mr. Harrison's Confessions first over this one. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this review. I hope you enjoy Mary Barton. If you have checked it out or now want to check it out, please let me know down below if you've read it. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more from me. And also, if you want to be notified anytime I make a new video, like your phone will let you know. If you hit the little notification bell off to the side and enable notifications in your YouTube app. Thanks so much guys. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.